welcome to Paranormal PJ Party, where we get a little sleepy, a little spooky, and keep you up all night. I'm your host, Sage, and here's my PJ, PJ preview of the day. <laughs> I, um, I'm wearing this vintage set that my older sister, my beautiful angel of an older sister, Ginger, gave me. Um, we are featuring some little, what is this? Heart? Truffles. I don't know. Car- Wait, le-, le cream. So we got some little pastries. It's really cute. And my honorary husband, <laughs> Tofu. Okay. I'm your host, Ava, and this is my page. This is my PJ preview <laughs> of the day. So, this is just like a basic set off like Amazon. Um, and then I got my sleep mask from also Amazon. Uh, and then this is um, Clementine. Clemmy. Clemmy. These might be our reoccurring bunny characters. <laughs> All right. For today. Um, our plan is to go through some stories on Reddit, r slash no sleep. How do we feel oh, about scared. this? scared. It's literally the day after 4th of July. Let's talk about 4th of July. So my parents had a party and it ended up being a lot of like older people, like just people that are friends with my parents that we don't know as well. So we ended up basically hanging out alone, oh, which yeah. was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Um, I wore my sister's red cowboy boots. So so cute. So cute. Um, and we ended up basically just running away for some kind of oh, yeah. Mario party, maybe. <laughs> um, okay. but it's fine. You don't have to talk about it. It's the day after, and we're already getting into these October. Oh yeah, just like October all year round. I don't want to say vibes because that's dumb. Yeah. But I don't really know another word to stand in for it. So October vibes. Um. All right. So we're gonna go through a saved post I have from r slash horror stories. Um. Let's just go. Are you reading first? Yeah. Okay. The title of this is, I was hired to clean out an old mansion. What I found in the attic still haunts me. I've been a professional cleaner for years, specializing in old abandoned properties. It's not a glamorous job, but it pays well. And I've always enjoyed the solitude. However, my latest assignment has left me questioning everything I thought I knew about the world. It started like any other job. I was hired by a wealthy client to clean out a mansion that had been in his family for generations. The place was massive, with dozens of rooms filled with dust and forgotten furniture. My client, Mr. Dawson, gave me strict instructions to leave the attic alone. What's in the attic? (laughs) He said it was full of old family memorabilia, and he would handle it himself. Curiosity has always been my weakness. After a week of cleaning, I couldn't resist the urge to take a peek. One afternoon, while Mr. Dawson was out, I climbed the narrow staircase to the attic. The door was locked, but a quick search through the house yielded an old key that fit perfectly. Mm. This already sounds wrong. Yeah. Like, honey, he told you not to go in the attic. Why are you going in the attic? I would be scared. I wouldn't go. Yeah, I wouldn't go. Like, what if there's a dead body up there? That's none of my business. (laughs) Okay. The attic was unlike any other part of the house. Oh. It was dark and musty, with a single window covered in grime. Grimes? (laughs) Grimes. As I moved my flashlight alone... Around, I noticed a strange metallic smell in the air. Blood. Oh, no. The space was filled with old trunks and covered furniture. But one thing caught my eye immediately. A large ornate mirror leaning against the far wall. That already sounds evil. Yeah. It was an antique with an intricately carved frame that seemed out of place in the dusty attic. It sounds like the mirror from um, Harry Potter. Yeah. (laughs) That's what I thought. The mirror is like the mirror of Erised. Is that right? I don't know. Like the one with Tom Riddle. Right? No, he like sees his family in it. <laughs> oh. Do you know what I'm talking about? In the s- yeah. A mirror of Arista. Yeah. Okay. I knew I got that right anyway. I was gonna get really embarrassed if I didn't. <laughs> All right. Anyway, back to back to black. Um. Uh, it was antique with an intricately carved frame that seemed out of place in the dusty attic. I approached it cautiously, my flashlight beam bouncing off the glass. As I got closer, I saw something move in the reflection. Ooh, no. My heart skipped a beat and I spun around, but there was nothing there. I turned back to the mirror and my blood ran cold. The reflection showed the attic as it was, but there was a figure standing behind me, a tall, shadowy man with glowing red eyes. I felt a chill run down my spine as the figure raised a hand and pointed directly at me. (gasps) Oh my... (laughs) I stumbled back, knocking over an old trunk. The figure in the mirror started to move, slowly stepping closer. 
my instinct screamed at me to run, but my legs felt like lead. Just as, if, <laughs> just as the figure was about to reach the surface of the mirror, I snapped out of my paralysis and bolted for the door. Oh, that I slammed, sounds awful. It does. I slammed the attic door shut behind me and locked it. My heart pounded in my chest as I leaned against the door, trying to catch my breath. I could hear faint whispers coming from the other side, but I couldn't make out any words. The metallic smell seemed to linger around me, clinging to my clothes. I decided to leave the mansion that night. I packed my things and left a note from Mr. Dawson, explaining that I couldn't continue the job. Girl, it's your own fault. Yeah. It's your own dang yeah. fault. Imagine, like, imagine being like, I can't do this job. But, like, you did yeah, it she, to yourself. she, like, kind of got herself, like, fired. Like, she, like, or I guess she quit, basically. But, like, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It's probably that morbidly obese squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Um, um. Hmm? I can't just go. Um, what was I saying? I lost my place. Oh, no. Uh. Okay. I sent the attic door shut behind me, locked the heart behind him, me, me, me. Um, I packed my things and left a note for Mr. Dawson explaining I couldn't continue the job. As I drove away, I glanced back at the house and saw a figure standing in the attic window watching me. Oh, no. A few days later, I received a call from Mr. Dawson. <gasps> bring! <laughs> bring! 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 He sounded frantic, asking me if I had gone into the attic. I admitted I had, and he cursed under oh, his breath. Oh, girl. He told me that the mirror had been in his family for centuries and girl. that it was cursed. Anyone who saw the figure in the mirror was doomed to be haunted by it for the rest of their lives. I thought he was crazy. Oh, my. But the nightmares began almost instantly. Yeah. Every night I dream of the attic and the figure with the red eyes. I feel its cold presence watching me wait for the moment I let my guard down. I've moved twice since then, but the dreams follow me wherever I go. <laughs> <laughs> we um proofread the story earlier, and I'm just like, I'm having a really hard time because um <laughs> originally I thought she said dream followed her everywhere when she was that- reading this to me. And like <laughs> dream, like face reveal dream. Honestly, that might be worse. Like, <laughs> we're just adding to the bullying content. Yeah. Dream, if you're watching this, you're gorgeous. Love you. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, but the dreams follow me wherever I go. I've tried to destroy the mirror in my dreams, but it always reappears untouched. I'm writing this as a warning. If you're ever cleaning out an old house and find an, a, a hidden attic, leave it alone. Advice Some secrets taken. are better left undisturbed. <gasps> so anyway what do we think of the story i think she's stupid i think so too yeah i'm kind of pissed off at miss girl honestly like why did you go in there obviously like it's i wonder how the like owner feels all right we're gonna go to a new story r slash no sleep Oh, you want to read it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Me and Tofu are going to cuddle up. My wife has been peeking at me from around the corner and behind furniture. It's gone from weird to terrifying. Oh, no. Kim Walker. Oh, literally. My wife, Lynn, and I have been together for six years and married for 11 months. Our entire history together has been very normal and never once have I noticed any weird behaviors or red flags. I can't stress enough uh, how out of character this whole thing is for her. Lynn is very kind, intelligent, and thoughtful. She always, she, she's always been uh, the no nonsense, no nonsense type of person. Being childish or trying to scare me is not something she normally do. She doesn't, um, she doesn't even like watching horror movies. When she we first started dating, she agreed to watch The Shining with me because she knew how much I loved horror. She was so scared. Do you need help? (laughs) No, wait. I'm okay. Sorry. She's so scared that she didn't even make it through half of the movie before we had to turn it off. She isn't into anything creepy and has never been into pranks. It's just not her cup of tea. And that's fine. But that's what was so strange about this. It was just so unlike her. I should also add that she never had any mental health issues as far as I'm aware. It doesn't run in her family. I know some people are able to hide their mental health problems, but in the six years we've been together, uh, I think I, I'd see some sort of signs. Two months ago, I was working. I was, I was in the kitchen and making myself some coffee before work. I was running a bit late the mor- that morning, and 
Wait, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was running it's a okay, bit girl, late. Your time. This is like written kind of funny. Uh, I was running a bit late that morning and knew I, I knew I wouldn't be able to make it to Dunkin' Donuts for my usual morning fix. No, Dunkin'. No. Charlie D'Amelio is gonna come after you. No. Every time you're not running, she gets closer. Her drink is kind of bad. I've never tried it. I've never. I don't know if I've ever had Dunkin'. I don't think I don't really. I don't go there anymore. <laughs> anymore. Yeah. Just said you didn't have it. That's tea for another day. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Keep going. Um, I took a sip of my coffee as I hurried down the hall towards the front door. Uh, when I happened to notice Lynn peeking at me from around the corner ahead of me, I could only see her and a strand of her long dark hair. This is like she sounds like the girl from yeah, the ring. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Um, and a strand. Did of you like get a new TV? Mm-hmm. Like a vintage TV? Back in the day. <laughs> And a strand of her long, dark hair hanging against the wall. The rest of her body was concealed behind the corner. Is she, like, contorting? Um, That's scary. Yeah. I nearly spilt my coffee when I saw her. I did burn the crap out of my lips. Jeez, Lynn, I said, wiping a few drops of coffee from my pants. You scared the crap out of me. She immediately popped out of, of view like a little kid that had been caught. I heard her scurry off towards the living room, and by the time I got to the front door, she was out of sight. Wow. She's not really, like, possessed. No, this seriously, that's like scary. Something is straight out of a horror movie. Yeah. It was, like, uh, it was really weird and totally out of character for her, like I said. But also, I found it kind of funny that she was, been, she's being, she was being more playful and a little less serious. I shouted that I loved her and called her a weirdo. As I shut the door behind me, I heard her laughing. Her behavior was a bit odd, but certainly, but it was certainly wasn't something to call a priest over. I forgot about it by lunch, and by the time I got home, she was her normal self. I didn't bring it up, neither did she, and life went on. The next incident happened three days later. It was around 2 a.m., and I had just woken up to get a drink. I was, um, I was standing in the kitchen, standing at the kitchen island, jug of OJ in hand. When I felt a stro- Jug of OJ in hand. Choice of weapon. Yeah. Weapon of choice. <laughs> um, OJ, who knew? <laughs> Keep going, sorry. Um, where was I? You made me lose my point. Jug of OJ in hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, when I felt a strong feeling that I was being watched, for whatever reason, I looked down at the floor and saw my wife's smiling, my wife's smiling face staring back. She was peeking at me from the other side of the island, staring up at me with ah! wide, unblinking eyes and a gr- and grinning. Grinning like the Cheshire cat. Girl, what? <laughs> okay, this... She's... She sounds not okay. <laughs> Girl, is that your wife? Yeah, um... I don't think so. I don't think so. I think your wife has been dead for a while. Oh. Something's taken over this Literally. vessel. <laughs> Literally. <clears throat> I, I screamed. I, I'll admit it. Not out of irritation, but fear. For some reason, at that moment, I was scared. At the sound of my scream, Lynn scuttled backwards out of my view, her hands and feet smacking the tile floor as she hurried out of the kitchen on all fours. Uh, Okay, girl. (coughs) I didn't run after her or even yell at her. I just stood there frozen in shock, wondering what the heck had possessed her to do that. It took me a long... It took me a little longer than... I'd like to admit to go back upstairs, but eventually I did. When I got to our bedroom, Lynn was lying on her side asleep, or at least pretending to be. I stood there for a while watching her breathe as breathing to be sure she really was asleep. Okay, whatever was in the kitchen definitely, like, wasn't his wife. Yeah, what the heck? Because, hello? Is his wife okay? I is concerning. Yeah. I had the feeling she might jump out at me at the moment I got into bed, but she didn't. I climbed in, into bed and she Being didn't. Being jump scared by your own wife is crazy. Uh, he, this dude's like on like on his toes every single second, mm-hmm. <laughs> waiting just to be jump scared. <laughs> I climbed into bed and she didn't even move. Her breathing was soft and deep, and I was staring to wonder. I was or starting to wonder if I dreamt the whole thing. The next morning, I waited for her to come downstairs for a coffee and after. And after handing her a mug and kissing her cheek, I decided to ask her about it. 
what was that about last night? I asked, keeping my tone light so I didn't offend or embarrass her. She frowned over her coffee cup, or her cup of coffee, shaking her head like she had no clue what I was referring to. You were peeking at me again, from over there. I said, pointing to the spot on the floor by the kitchen island. She followed my gaze, and when she looked back at me, she burst out laughing. She laughed so hard that I couldn't help but join her. You creep me the heck out sometimes, you know that? I said. She giggled and set her cup on the counter and wrapped her arms around my neck. You you creep me out all the time, so I guess we're even, she teased. Oh, okay. Hi. We said our goodbyes after I... She, we said our goodbyes and I left for work. As I drove, I kept thinking about how creepy I had been um, seeing her grin at, grinning at me from behind the island like that. The sounds her hands made on the floor as she crawled away. Wait. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, grinning at me from behind the island like that. The sounds her hands made on the floor as she crawled away. I told myself she was just trying to be silly, just trying to join me. And my love of all things horror. It's not like I was afraid of her, but it did. It still didn't sit right with me. I started seeing her peeking at me more and more. Sometimes she'd be peeking out from behind the couch or living room curtain. Once she even managed to get inside her grandmother's old trunk that sits at the foot of our bed. I might not have been. I, I might not have even known she was there at all. The trunk Ooh. old hinges. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I might have not even known she was there at all. Had the trunk's old hinges hinges not given her away. She had the lid po- propped up just enough so that only half of her face peeked through. She'd been grinning at grinning like an excited toddler and it was unnerving. Oh, I bet. I really hope this is a fake story. That's terrible. Yeah. I didn't even know what to say to her. All I could do was stare. When I finally found my voice, I asked her why on earth she was doing this. She didn't answer, but slowly closed the lid, shutting herself inside the trunk. I just walked away, feeling disturbed. I didn't understand why she was doing it, but it clearly made her happy. I just hoped she would tire of the game quickly. Lynn didn't peek at me for the next two weeks. I started to think she was done with her weird prank, and I was relieved. Uh, we were watching a show on Netflix one night, and I was jokingly said that um, I hadn't seen her peeking at me lately, and she must ha- um, had given up on her spy game. She looked at me with a small smile and said, maybe I just gotten better at it. <gasps> you know how I feel about that? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. Yeah. What the heck? Girl, your husband. Your- Wait. Girl, your wife needs some help. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's not normal. They just, like, snoop around your house, like, peeking at you. I'll be having that. I'll be having that. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't say anything, but I wondered whether or not she was joking. For the next few days, I couldn't stop thinking about what she had said. Was she still peeking at me when I wasn't looking and I just hadn't noticed? And if so, um... What the heck was she getting out of this? I started to feel paranoid, constantly checking whether she was watching from around the corner or behind a door. I was jumpy whenever I was home and she wasn't in full view of me. Uh, I felt stupid and a little crazy. Imagine She's like, the one that's crazy. Oh yeah, imagine if you're like just like getting like like you literally just don't feel safe in your house anymore, like and scared. Yeah, well the thing that's weird about that is like if did it did he say they're married? Yeah. Like you're married. Like you can like watch like how do I put this? You don't have to spy on your husband to see what oh, he's yeah. doing. Like you can just look at him. Like not that you should just be like <laughs> staring down your husband, your partner or whatever, but it's like if you're just like with like around your husband like you or like you know your partner just in general, you don't necessarily have to spy on them to know what they're doing. Like, oh, it yeah. sounds like he was just doing, like, normal stuff, too. It's not like he was, like, cheating she's, on she's her. He's just being the creepy one. Like, she just likes the idea of, like, hiding. Oh, yeah. But after a few weeks without another incident, I began to relax. I stopped checking behind the furniture and the walls and told myself it was just a bad memory. Then a few days ago, things got much worse. 
Lynn l- left to go to a friend's. I l- lounged on top of the couch and played a couple games on my laptop. Around 9 p.m., I hopped into the shower and I was washing soap from my hair. I felt that awful feeling that I was being watched. I slowly opened my eyes and almost had a freaking heart attack. Lynn was peeking from behind the curtain shower. Her entire head stretched into the shower, leaving her body outside. Her long, dark hair hung against the curtain and and dripping with water. Her mouth hung open in a terrible grin, eyes wide and red. If she hadn't blinked in a while, I screamed, or as if, sorry, as if she hasn't blinked in a while, I screamed and jumped back against the wall. She didn't move nor smile, nor um her smile waver. Her makeup ran down her cheeks into two black streaks. She was looking giddy and completely deranged. I was flipping terrified. I would be too. Oh yeah. She's literally sounds like she the, literally is the ring girl reincarnated. No, it, it sounds like that. Like all the hair like dripping and everything. Oh yeah. Bring, bring. <laughs> that's oh, that's awful. We stood like that for a few moments, neither of us saying a word. Finally, after what felt like forever, she slowly pulled her head back out of the shower and watched and I and I watched her blurry figure through the curtain as she moved back towards the bathroom door. Okay, honestly, if that were me, I would, like, say something. It's, like, weird. It feels like they have a disconnect in their relationship. Because why are we not talking about this? Mm-hmm. Also, the fact she's, like, admitting it. Because yeah. she was like, maybe I just got better at it. That's completely. Crazy. That's terrifying. Crazy. Like, where is she hiding? Like, does she have a people? <laughs> does she, like, watch him while he sleeps? I really hate that idea. Oh, yeah. She's giving, like, Edward vibes from her life. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know you've, like... Do you... You read the book, right? Yeah. Because she... You've never seen the movie, though. Um, There's, like, a part where, like, Bella wakes up, and he's just, like, watching her sleep in her room. Oh my he's just, like, God. standing in the corner, and then she's, like, what the heck? And, like, turns on the lamp, and then, like, she's, like, gone for, like, a second, and then she, like, looks back, and he's gone. Oh, yeah. Oof. He's spying. Oh, yeah. She's spying. Um, where was I? A second later, the bathroom door slammed shut, hard enough to rattle the mirror. I screamed again and jumped out of the shower to, to lock the door. I stayed in the bathroom for over an hour. I would too. Oh yeah, maybe I was. Uh, maybe I overreacted to some. Uh, maybe I overreacted to some of you. But joke or not, I wasn't going to put up with this crazy crap anymore. That's what I kept telling myself as I paced in the bathroom, stopping to listen at the door every few minutes. Suddenly, I heard a muffled sound, and I pressed my ear against the bathroom door, straining to listen. I couldn't hear anything, but I envisioned Lynn standing at the other side of the door, giggling at her joke. I felt a surge of anger. I was beyond pissed at at being um, made to feel scared in my own house and made to hide in the bathroom for an hour. All for what? Some joke? If it if it was a joke, it's an awful one. What the heck, Lynn? I snapped. This crap is getting really freaking annoying. <laughs> 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 I waited for her to apologize or to call me a jerk, but instead I heard a faint moan. So quiet, I wondered if I heard it at all. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you sounded like no face from Spirit It Away. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh. <clears throat> Sorry. Um. So quiet, I wondered if I heard it all, and then complete science, silence. Lynn? I called out, not being, not able to even hide the shakiness in my voice. I got no response, just my own heavy breathing. I swear to God, just freaking stop it, I yelled, pounding my fist on the door. I waited for her to cuss me out, something I would expect from her, from me, something I would expect from me talking to her like that. I never screamed at her before. But this was... Nothing, just the occasional drip from the shower head. I won't deny that I was scared, too afraid to open the dang door and face my own wife. I waited another 30 minutes or so, which feels like a lifetime when you're scared. Finally, yeah. I deci- yeah, finally decided I wasn't going to spend the night hiding in my bathroom, so I got down on my knees and peered under the door. I almost expected to see her face peeking at me, but thankfully I didn't. I could see straight down the hallway to the top of the stairs, but no Lynn. I didn't know if she would if I should be happy about that or not. I looked up for a few minutes, waiting uh, 
waiting to see her head pop up over the top step, but it never came. I stood up, my hands hovering over the door, and mental and I mentally prepared myself to open it. Slowly, I slowly turned the lock with shaky fingers, and I was about to yank it open when I heard a sound that still makes me feel nauseous when I think about it. A moan louder than before, but ah! Ah! <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> start making like <laughs> video game action sound effects. Ah! Ah! Uh! Yeah. <laughs> I'd be scared. Keep going. A moan louder than before, but this time I was able to t- to tell just where it was coming from. I turned my head to the closet door as if in slow motion and locked eyes with my wife who was peeking out at me from the slight gap. Her eyes were still wide as ever, and her mouth was hanging open in the most grotesque, gaping smile I'd ever oh. seen. I didn't scream. I was too scared for. I was too scared for even that. Her hands were clasped to her chest, clasped to her chest, body trembling with sheer delight, as if she could barely contain her excite, her excitement. A short, raspy moan bubbled from her throat. A deep, raw, or uh, deep and raw, sending a shiver through my entire body. Somehow I found the ability to pull the bathroom door open and ran as fast as I could all the way down the steps, snagging my keys and my phone. Probably from get a divorce. Oh, yeah. Like, even if she did return normal, like, after this, like, I wouldn't. Like, I couldn't. I wouldn't. I'd be right there. He needs to call it off, even if she calls it love. This is toxic. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Where was I? Um, snagging my keys and phone from the table in the living room before running outside to my car. I couldn't hear her shrill laugh. I or I could hear her shrill laughter behind me, but I didn't hear her getting closer. I didn't bother shutting the front door. I drove away from the house faster than I legally should have, shivering the entire time. Either from fear or the cold, maybe a little of both. I haven't grabbed a coat or even <laughs> a pair of shoes. I was still in my boxers, and my hair was damp. Imagine he like, he's like, oh, I'm finally out of here. And she's right. Checks the like the, uh, the rear view. She's like in the back seat. She's like, oh my god. And then he pisses himself and <laughs> crashes the car. I would. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I drove straight to my brother Chris's house, about forty minutes away, and ignoring every call and text I got, I didn't even check my phone until I was safely parked in my brother's driveway. Then I called four times and sent in four of texts, all wondering where. Where I'd gone and why I'd left like that. Girl, why do you think? Yeah, girl. girl use common sense. Oh, yeah. I threw my phone at the dash in rage. Here is her nonchalant attitude. My brother and his wife were surprised to see me, especially dressed in just a pair of boxers, but told me to stay as long as I needed. Chris lent me some clothes and asked me what happened. I told him Lynn and I had a fight, but... um. But then How do you tell him too. that, like, my wife's possessed? Help! My wife's been spying on me. Like, not like, because he wouldn't believe you. He'd just be like, what the heck? Well, like, because that feels like, like, if you just say that, that feels like something that, in theory, you could just, like, talk out. Like, why? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be like, why did, like, why would you, like, why'd you leave? Don't like, you could have just talked to him about it. Um, oh, it gets me. <laughs> Uh, I told him Lynn ha- and I had a fight, but I didn't get into the details. I didn't want him to think I was overreacting, leaving my wife over a prank, even if it was a shrink ray. I mean, I hadn't encouraged her. I, I, I mean, hadn't I encouraged her for years to lay up instead of being so serious all the time? I wanted her to relax and loosen up, but this was definitely not what I had in mind. I tried to sleep on... This, their sofa, but my brain wouldn't let me sleep. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw Lynn's face staring at me from inside the closet, knowing she'd been in there with me the entire time and made my skin crawl. She never left the bathroom at all. Babe, by loosen up, I didn't mean unhinge your jaw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, excuse me. Every time I talk, you lose your place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh yes, for sure. Uh, she never left the bathroom at all. Instead, she slipped inside the clo- inside the closet, and slammed the bathroom door sh- shut to fool me. 
the mere thought of going back home it gave me anxiety. I tossed and turned, unable to sleep. Chris ended up giving me a sleeping pill, so I was able to get a little rest. My sleep was filled with terrible dreams, all of Lynn's smiling face. That's, like, crazy to, like, marry someone, like, devote your life to them, like. And then being scared of love. Them. Like, love them endlessly, like, and then suddenly it turns into this thing where, like, you can't even, like, they're in your nightmares. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be okay. I had a nightmare. <laughs> I had a nightmare. She was trauma. She was trauma. <laughs> This is TikTok. Making breakfast oh, for yeah. my German boyfriend who cheated on me. I had a nightmare. Oh. <laughs> no. She was trauma. She was blonde businesswoman. I woke up just as the sun started to rise. My sore body ached from the sofa and I felt drained. I knew I had to call in at some point, but I didn't know what to say to her. I wouldn't be going home unless she gave me her word to me. She, she'd never do um, the creepy stuff anymore. I just wanted my wife back. Her normal, serious self n- never looked so good to me. I was contemplating calling her and telling her that when that familiar feeling came over me, I was being wa- or I was contemplating calling her and telling her that when that familiar familiar feeling came over me, I was being watched. I was star- staring at my ceiling. I was staring at the ceiling, my heart in my throat. I didn't want to look away. But the longer I ignored the feeling, it got worse. My eyes drifted away from the ceiling almost on their own. Her face was... Her... Sorry, what is going on? Her face was... Her face was pressed up against the window besides the couch, staring down at me with the same gaping smile. Drool dribbled down her lips, leaving two long shrieks down the glass. I didn't know how she'd been there, but... uh, how, How long she'd been there. But something told me she was... That she's been there quite po- uh, quite a while, possibly all night. Wait, at the house where he was? At her, his brother's house. <gasps> Staring at the window at him. How'd she find him? Ew! She's crazy! I didn't bother screaming, though I was afraid anger trumped any fear, and I felt, I felt at that moment. I jumped from the couch and pounded my palm against the glass. Lynn, are you crazy? What the heck is wrong with you? Just just go home, I shouted. Now. She didn't move. And slightly ga- and She didn't move. And her ghastly expression never changed. If anything, her smile only grew as she had never been more elated. I could hear... Ew, she li- feeds off of his fear. Oh, uh, yeah. I, like, I'm scared. Like, I feel like, like, imagine, like, that happens and then, like, he gets a call on her phone and it's her. She's like, babe, where are you? <laughs> Come back. She's like, where'd you go? I haven't been home in days. <laughs> I was at my sister's house. I thought I told you this. That'd be wicked. She's like, what have I done? Um, beware of the gay shapeshifters. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier, Ava told me to beware of the shapeshifters, but I thought she said, beware of the gay shapeshifters. <laughs> Happy late Pride Month. <clears throat> um, I could hear Chris and it and his wife moving around upstairs, as if Lynn could hear them from her place outside. Her head twitched slightly in the direction, and she began to close her mouth slowly. Chris called my name from upstairs, obviously concerned. I turned to see him and his wife, Rebecca, hurrying down the steps. When I turned back to the window, Lynn was gone. The only sign she had been there was the two streaks of drool dripping down the glass. I tried to explain to Chris and Rebecca about how about uh, waking up to see Lynn watching me through the window. They were skeptical. Who wouldn't be? Chris and I, um, Chris and I went outside to the spot in the front window but there were no footprints in the dirt just a slight indent probably an animal chris guessed and didn't argue he and rebecca assumed i jumped the entire episode but they didn't understand i was too tired to explain it to them i called out of work that day and turned and turned my cell off i w- didn't want to face lynn just talking to her was too much for me at that point i really started to believe something uh irreversibly was irreversibly wrong with her that no matter what she prom- what promises she made she would never be the same again the thought saddened me to my core i cried most of the morning by noon i figured out i was ready to confront her give her one last chance to explain herself i could at least give her like give her that after 6 years i told myself i turned my phone on and saw the dozens of texts she sent me all seemingly concerned all fr- all from my seemingly concerned wife can we talk? I love you. Please call me. I'm really worried. 
can you answer? Just come home. And more of the same. All text she loved all text telling me she loved me and she wanted me home. How worried she was. Not a dang not a dang one addressing the crazy stuff she pulled. Like she hadn't been acting like a character from a Stephen King book. <laughs> Even her texts were different. She normally texted uh, novels just to tell me to pick up a loaf of bread. You'd think she had more to say after her bizarre shenanigans. I know it probably seems childish to some of you who are miles away from this situation, but if you saw the way Lena looked at me, how she scampered away on all fours, like some wild animal grinning at me from inside the clo- inside the closet like a lunatic, then I think you'd find my reaction was a warranted. Well, or was warranted. I ended up saying, uh, with Chris and Rebecca for another night. I didn't wake up till until yesterday afternoon, and thankfully I didn't see Lynn's face watching me through the window. I don't want to pry because it's not my place, but this fight, this fight, something c- that could. But is this fight something that could be mended? Rebecca asked. She made us both a sandwich for lunch, and I knew that. I knew she w- wanted to preach this subject without seeming no, seeming to be nosy. I don't know. I just. She's like a different person. I said, choosing my words carefully. I still wasn't ready for her or Chris to know the full extent of the bat crazy. <laughs> um, the craziness that I've been dealing with. People change, Ben, but she's still the same woman you married. Maybe you both just need to talk through your issues. Whatever's going on, I'm sure it can be fixed. She said. She said. Ever the pace. The peacemaker. I think it's beyond that now. I don't think talking would help, but I just don't trust her. I said the words stung my stung in my heart. I miss and love my I miss and love my wife, but how could I ever live with something like that? Living in constant fear and didn't living in constant fear didn't sound too appealing. Lynn says she love you loves you and she had to be absolutely cl- crushed. She said I don't know about that. I said. Well, sir. Certain, she certainly seemed to like it to me. I never seen her so upset. Very much unlike the Lint I know. Rebecca said, shaking her head sadly. It took a full minute for her words to really sink in, and when they did, I felt dread worming its way through my skin. Wait, what do you mean? You saw her? You saw Lynn? I asked. My mouth suddenly dry. Rebecca nodded casually, as if that wasn't the nightmare. F- or Rebecca nodded casually as as if the fact that was a nightmare fuel. Maybe it, for her it wasn't. She stopped by this morning just after Chris left for work, she said, cleaning the plates from the table. I didn't see her car, though. Maybe she took an Uber or something. Beck, why? Wait, Beck, what did she say? Did she come inside? I asked, sweat sweat start starting to break out of my on my forehead. I began looking around, examining corners as though a predator lurked behind them. No, she just asked if you were awake yet and told, and I said that you weren't. I asked if she wanted me to wake you, but she said no. She sh- said just to let you sleep. She said as she washes the dirty dishes. That's all? She didn't say anything else, I asked. No, she she looked awful, though, like she hadn't slept in days. I think you should call her. I got up from the lunch table and re- thanked Rebecca for lunch. Or I got up from the table and thanked Rebecca for lunch. I felt a little bit better at the knowledge that at least she had com- she hadn't come inside. Still, I needed to double check that the doors were locked. Oh, this is crazy. What? It's just. Are you reading ahead? No. It's just. I'm scared. She's wild. Yeah, she's a wild one. It's a really long one. Do you want me to read some of it? Yeah. Okay. Wait. Where was I? <laughs> Um, I felt a little bit better at the knowledge that at least she hadn't come inside. Still, I needed to double check that the doors were locked. I sat for a while trying to figure out what to do next. I didn't want to go home, but I felt that I owed it to Lynn to help her if I could. Hadn't I swore an oath to love and honor her through sickness and in health? Clearly, she was very sick. If she was sick, which I truly believe she was, I had to try and get her the help she needed. But I didn't even know where to start. I didn't want to call the police, and besides, what the heck was I going to tell them? My wife was peeking at me, but she was being creepy. 
As bizarre as she'd been, she really hadn't committed any crime. Not yet, anyway. The police would have probably said that I was overreacting. But this wasn't some prank. It felt wrong. Dangerous, even. Like something sinister lurked beneath her smile. I knew as her husband, I was well within my rights to have her committed. But what if she simply acted normal in their presence? She'd obviously been able to fool Rebecca into thinking she was just a concerned wife. As long as the doctors didn't find her a danger to herself or to others, they'd have no choice but to release her after 72 hours. I felt lost and overwhelmed. I think he should take that 72 hours and relocate to another country. To another? Change his name, yeah. win his protection. To another continent. Yeah. So I did what any husband in my position would do. I called her mother. I didn't want to, believe me. Her mother, Marianne, and I were never on the best of terms. We never fought or anything like that. She just wasn't very, she wasn't a very warm person and wasn't really easy easy to get along with. She hardly ever smiled, and when she did, only her lips would move into a thin lipped smile, leaving her eyes as blank as before. She gave off this aura that felt like she was permanently on the offense. I'd only met her twice, and both times were for such short visits. I got the impression she didn't approve of me or her daughter. Lynn always ushered us out quickly, as she didn't want me to feel uncomfortable, and I, which I was grateful for. Being in her mother's company felt almost unbearable, like walking on glass. I was glad when we moved three states away so we didn't have to see her often. I was happy to avoid the woman, but I needed her help. I didn't have to move three more states to get away from Lynn. Three more continents, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't want to talk to her at all, but I had to talk to someone, and someone who knew Lynn better than I did. So I grit my teeth and do, and so I grit my teeth and did what i had to do yes she answered already sounding irritated marianne it's me ben do you have a minute to talk i asked i could hear her cluck her tongue in irritation irritation i'm in the middle of writing some checks but if you insist i suppose i can spare a moment what is it that you want to discuss benjamin oh she said it's about lynn she's been acting strangely and I was wondering if you had any idea whether there was something... I was quickly interrupted. It's a bit difficult to follow your rambling, Benjamin. What is it that you want from me? She asked. I could almost see her, standing there in her thin sweater and slacks, tapping her fingernails impatiently on the table. I wanted to know if you ever noticed any odd behavior in Lynn? Or possibly any mental health issues? I asked. There was a long, uncomfortable pause that I couldn't tell... I couldn't tell if it was because she was just thinking or something else. Finally, after a few seconds, she spoke. I'm not sure if this is one of your jokes, Benjamin, but if so, I don't find the humor in it. Now, I do have business to attend to, as I've said. So if you don't mind, she said, but I cut her off before she could get rid of me. Marianne, it's not a joke. I'm sincerely concerned about Lynn's mental health. Her behavior has been very erratic lately. I'm very worried about her, and I figured, as your mother, you would be as well, I said, my frustration evident in my voice. If you're truly concerned, then I suggest you get the health professionals involved. I don't know what you expect of me. She snapped. I could, she snapped. I could tell she was seconds away from hanging up, and for some reason, I was desperate not to let her. I had the feeling that she knew a lot more than she was letting on. Oh. Please, if not for me, do it for Lynn, I tried. I heard a faint, faint shaky intake of breath, as, she, as if she was trying to hold her silly persona together, but failing. Marianne, what's wrong? I started. Benjamin, I don't know what to tell you. My only advice would be to seek professional help. Do not call here again. Goodbye. Oh. I tried to call out to her, but she hung up. This girl knows something. Oh, yeah. They know something that they're not letting on. I tried to wrap my head around the call and her refusal to help me. Even if she didn't like me, why wouldn't she want to help her own daughter? I couldn't understand that. I tried to replay the conversation, desperate to find something I missed. After a while, I almost gave up until I remembered her last words to me. Seek professional help. She said those words with a bit of urgency. I could have just been grasping grasping at straws, but no. I was sure her voice had changed ever so slightly when she said that, as if they were very important. What did she mean? I assumed she'd been referring to medical professionals, but maybe she was referring to someone else. A someone- priest? <laughs> An exorcism? Oh, yeah. Someone that she didn't, for some reason, feel comfortable saying directly. Or maybe I was just desperate. I waited for Chris to get home, and after a very long and exhausting conversation with him and Rebecca, I convinced them that Lynn truly needed psychiatric help. I didn't tell them everything. I wasn't prepared to go into it yet, but I told them about her last encounter. 
while she'd hidden in the bathroom, peeking at me from the closet. They were obviously shocked, but thankfully they believed me. They too just wanted to help her. Still, they didn't think it was all that serious. Weird, maybe, but not dangerous. They just kept saying that Lynn had to be playing some kind of weird joke. Maybe for YouTube? Rebecca offered, if only half-heartedly. Wicked prank on my husband. Ah. It went crazy wrong. At 3 a.m. Paranormal. The cops were called. I was admitted into a mental institution. (laughs) I just said mental mental institution. Not clickbait. Crazy. Um, Chris didn't think we should involve the police just yet. He offered instead to go with me, and I readily accepted. He reasoned that calmly talking to her, trying to coax her into going willingly, willing, willingly was the best recourse. I, re- I agreed to do it his way. At least I wouldn't be going into the house alone. We drove over this morning just after breakfast. There was no way I was going at night. When we pulled into the driveway, my stomach began doing somersaults. Oh. Her car wasn't there, but I still didn't let my guard down. The front door was ajar. If her car's not home and the front door's open, that's bad. Yeah. And for a split second, I thought we'd see her eyes staring through the gap. I was shaking and starting to sweat. Chris, however, was fine. He waited for me to open the door, his hands in his pockets, like he was going on a freaking stroll through the park. I envied his ignorance. I pushed the door open and was immediately hit with a sense of rot. Oh. Oh, Chris smelled it, too, and he walked in the house behind me with his nose scrunched up. What do you guys use to clean the floors around here, poop? (laughs) Chris mumbled. Shut up, I said, my eyes darting around for any signs of Lynn. The house was deadly quiet and dark, despite being 10 in the morning. All the curtains were closed up tight, refusing to allow any sunlight inside. If I hadn't left it just two days prior, I'd have thought the house had to be abandoned. We moved through each room, carefully checking any place that she might hide, occasionally calling her name. Why the Sounds F are like you looking under the dog. couch? <laughs> Why the F are you looking under the couch? I'm going to give Chris a voice. Why the F are you looking under the couch? Chris asked eventually. Are we looking for your wife? <laughs> He's looking at me like I was a moron. Let's just go upstairs, I whispered. He shook his head but Let's followed me. Let's just go upstairs. <laughs> he shook his head but followed me upstairs to check the bathroom and spare bedroom. On the way up, my shoes crunched over pieces of glass that looked oh, to be littered over a oh few goodness. steps. I noticed that one of Lynn and my wedding portraits that hung on the wall along the staircase had been smashed. The frame hung crookedly, all the glass removed. I stared at the picture, a lump forming in my throat. We had taken the photo after leaving the church, after saying our vows. She looked so beautiful in her white gown. I looked at Lynn's beautiful face. I never dreamed her face would ever be a source of terror for me. (laughs) We climbed the rest of the steps and checked the spare bedroom, but it looked completely untouched. I was hesitant to go into the bathroom, my fear from the night coming back to me all at once. Chris noticed and offered to go in by himself, but I couldn't let him do that. So we walked in together, checking the closet and the shower. The bathroom looked as as if it hadn't been touched since the night I left. I don't think she's here, Ben. Wait, I forgot the voice I did. She's like, I don't 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 think think she's here. I don't think she's here, Ben. Why don't you pack some clothes and we'll try coming back tomorrow or something? (laughs) I don't think that works. More man thing. I don't think she's here, Ben. Why don't you pack some clothes and we'll try coming back? (laughs) We'll try coming back tomorrow or something. (laughs) Chris said. I nodded and went into our bedroom and shoved some clothes into a duffel bag. When I checked inside our closet, I came across the source of the smell and gagged. Oh. Chris took one look and lost <gasps> all color in his face. Oh, no. He had, to go, he had to go stand by the stairs to get away from the sight and smell. I gazed down in shock. I gazed down in shock at what lay inside my bedroom closet, soaking into the rug were at least a dozen eyeballs. All carefully laid out in pairs. Some were as large as a quarter, while others were as tiny as a marble. Yeah, wow. I stared down at the eyes she'd collected from small animals, and I wondered how she got at them, and shuddered at the thought. Man, I thought I had a bad with my <laughs> shoe addiction, but f me. <laughs> Your wife's in here collecting eyeballs, Chris said, gagging. <laughs> but I'm, I think we should go. He called from the hall. I'm getting nauseous. <laughs> his voice changing. He's going through like his voice changing. Oh so yeah. Fine. Um. All right. The, the, quite the roller coaster for Chris. Seriously. <clears throat> all right. 
I grabbed my duffel and shut the closet door on my new nightmare. I stepped out into the hall and took a deep breath of air. I could taste the rot on my tongue and couldn't help but go. Who the F lines up eyeballs in their closet like that? Chris mumbled. I tried to tell you you, she needed help, I said. She doesn't need help, Ben. She needs an effing exorcist, he said. Oh, yeah, literally. You come on or what? I can't stand the smell any. His words died in his throat, and his eyes grew wide with fear. I didn't ask him why. I could feel it. Someone was watching me, and I didn't think it was the eyes in the closet. I turned around, my eyes slowly scanning the bedroom. Christ, I whispered, as I finally saw what we'd missed. Under the bed, curled on her side, watching us with the excitement of a kid on Christmas morning was my wife. She held her hands together just under her chin, and they were shaking eagerly. Now that she knew what she'd been found, I could hear the quiet noises she was making. A sort of hiccuping sound in her throat, as if the excitement was just too much for her. It was unnerving, to say the least. Wide eyes and that same huge smile. Ah! Everything in me told me to run, but I forced it away. This was my wife. No matter how twisted, she was still the woman I married. I had to help her. Lynn, I said softly. She didn't respond, but her head back, bobbed back and forth in two quick little movements as if she were nodding. Baby, I just want to help, okay? Can you, can you let me do that? I asked. I had taken a single step forward, approaching her like a dangerous animal. Oh, my God. I love you, Lynn, I said softly, taking another step closer. She let a tiny moan escape her wide-open mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to resist the urge to run. Her shoulders were starting to quiver, and her eyes grew as large as saucers. I crouched down so I could see her better, then immediately saw the blood. Her hands were covered in it. They trembled more the closer I got, as if she was barely able to contain herself. Lynn, are you hurt? You're bleeding, I said. She bobbed her head again, her bloody fingers moving up and down as if playing an invisible piano. They occasionally grazed her chin, leaving smears of blood on her skin. I wanted to recoil in disgust. The smell that was coming off of her was revolting. I could feel the vomit trying to climb up my throat. Her lips were dry and stretched, thin, blood seeping. And stretched thin, blood seeping between the cracks. I knew she wouldn't come out on her own, but I didn't want to leave her in the state she was in. I scooted closer and reached out to her. The excited hiccuping sounds got louder and her hands shook, fingers flexing. It was then that I could see the blood oozing from in between her fingers. Oh my god, Lynn, you're bleeding, I said. Instinctively, I reached out to take her hand, but before I could even touch her, her hand sprang out towards me. A sharp pain shot through my arm and I fell back on, on my butt. My arm burned and I could see the blood dripping down on the carpet. I looked back at her in shock and I saw her grinning, grinning madly her fingers clutching a large shard of glass. You all right in there? Chris asked, <laughs> You're from, right in there. <laughs> Chris asked from behind me. I turned but my head slightly. <laughs> she was a nightmare! <laughs> I turned my head slightly and nodded to him, cradling my arm to my chest. When I turned back to face Lynn, I saw that her focus had shifted. She wasn't looking at me anymore, and she wasn't smiling anymore either. Oh. She was staring past me her eyes glaring at Chris the way a hungry lion might stare at an antelope. Her mouth was still hanging open, but it was twisted into a snarl. I got to my feet and began walking backwards down the hall, afraid to take my eyes off of her. Are you... <laughs> ablating? Chris asked. <laughs> ablating? The moment, of word, the moment the words left his mouth, Lynn started fast, scooting out from under the bed, the glass shard still in her fist. Oh my god. Chris, run, go! I yelled. He must have been too afraid to move because a second uh, later I felt my back bump into him. He was still standing at the top of the stairs, staring at the horror that was my wife. Lynn had crawled completely out from under the bed and stood in the bedroom doorway, her face twisted in rage. Her whole body was visibly tense. Blood ran down her fingers and onto the floor. Jesus, Lynn, Chris said. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Jesus, Lynn. Jesus, Lynn. Chris said, you are playing hide and seek. I reached back and pushed him towards the steps. Move your butt, Chris. I said as quietly but firmly as I could. Lynn bobbed her head in fast, sharp motions and began to grin, stretching her mouth open wider and wider so that her chin seemed to touch her chest. I heard Chris mutter a prayer, and then he was running down the stairs. I t stood at the top of the steps, stuck between the love for a woman who clearly needed seriously serious help and self-preservation. I, I only want to help, I said, choking back tears. Her eyes focused on me once again as she slowly lifted the glass, holding it out in front of her. And then she started sprinting towards me, grinning with utter excitement. Thankfully, my body took over. And I flew down the stairs, skipping two or three at a time. 
I made it to the front door before I felt her leap onto my back, wrapping her in arms around my neck, her open mouth next to my ear so that I could hear those terrible hiccuping sounds up close. I shook her off of me, knocking her to the floor. I felt a searing pain in my back as she went, but I tore open the front door and bolted to my car. <laughs> Chris was standing in the front yard, talking on the phone with the police. I didn't say a word. I just ran in my car and jumped in. Chris took the hit and followed me, still on the line with 911. I watched the, the rearview mirror, sure I'd see her there, running after us, but I never did. I went straight to the ER, and I got 11 stitches in my arm and three on my back. Oh my god. The police asked a lot of questions and went back to the house to do a search, but of course Liam wasn't there. They advised me to stay with a friend or relative for a while and to, fr to file a restraining order as soon as I could, but none of those things matter. Somehow I just knew. I dropped Chris off at home and went to a motel an hour away. I wanted to put as much distance between me and Lynn as I could. This is where I've been for the last four hours. I thought maybe the police would find her. Maybe they'd get her the help she desperately needs, but no. Now I don't think so. Forty minutes ago, I got a text from an unknown number. Oh, no. Just three words. I found you. <laughs> and a picture attached. The picture was dark and grainy, but I instantly knew what it was. There was no mis mistaking my wife's eyes. I started ty typing this out immediately after. I don't know what to do. I'm alone and scared. And oh. I can't help but feel that I'm being watched. I think. That was honestly... That was, that was good. I got goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> God. That was a long story. I was scared we were going to go over our allotted time. Oh, yeah. Wow. That was scary. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I just judged. So let's unpack that. What are our thoughts? Girl is yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah. That's so interesting. I always do think about this. Um, I feel like I've heard another story about how people can just randomly, like, switch up on you after being in a relationship um there was a video i watched about like it was another stupid reddit, reddit stories video. Oh, yeah. um but they were talking about um how this girl thought that her husband was like spying on her and not peeking but like he had cameras and she couldn't like find them and she said that like every time she would like leave the house she would like think that she could like like or every time she would like Every, sorry, every time he would leave the house, sorry, I'm just forgetting stuff. Every time he would leave the house and then, like, come home, he'd be like, oh, so, like, how was, you know, how was your burger? Or, like, whatever that she, like, ate while he was gone. And she'd be like, what? Like, how'd you know yeah. about that? And, like, stuff like that. And that was after years of being married and he acted really weird. So it's just weird that, like, sometimes you can be married to people or know people for so many years and out of nowhere they just switch up. Oh, yeah. I know. I feel bad for him. His wife. I know. I wonder if this was a real story or if it was uh It's so fiction. Someone said, the scariest line by far was, maybe I've just gotten better at it. It genuinely made oh, my yeah. heart sink. Everyone was saying that they were picturing Momo. Honestly, like, I was kind of thinking of, like, that too. Or, like, like the girl Marie. from Marie. Yeah. It's kind of, like, the same thing. I wonder why, like, our, like, idea of, like, horror is just, like, girl with black greasy hair and big eyes scary <clears throat> all right should we read one more yeah we don't have a ton of time left um this is a bit of a rough first episode but Try i think to make one um for um hmm. shorter make sure it's shorter oh yeah no don't worry it'll definitely be shorter than that one wow what people write books on here Dang. i know that one was really long we should have like scrolled down. here's another really long one i'm just gonna read it okay we're gonna read this one it's, it, it looks kind of long but it's one of the shorter ones the previous tenant of my new flat left a survival guide. I'm not sure I want to live here anymore. A survival guide? For surviving the house? I moved in with my boyfriend yesterday. We've been together for five years now, and we're old and wise enough to settle down and finally leave our parents' houses. He's just turned 24, and I'm 22. He's the love of my life. His name is Jamie, and I couldn't be happier to be living with him. When we decided to make the leap, we spent two months looking at flats and houses. We couldn't afford to buy it, so renting was our only option, but the prices were astronomical. 
For our budget, we would have been lucky to get a box room and a stove. Jamie works for a local 24-hour fast food restaurant, and I'm training to be a teacher. The early stages of training don't pay much, and I owe a lot in student loans, so finances are tough. We'd almost given up hope until we found our flat. It was nothing special, to, but to us, it was a palace. A spacious two-bedroom apartment with views of a city park, a balcony, and local conveniences. It was in a tower block in a not-so-nice area, but neither of us had been wealthy growing up, so we weren't fussy. Just grateful to be together. <laughs> the Everett was sweetened by the deposit fee option and open-ended tenancy. The landlord was happy to sign a five-year contract. That sort of thing never happens in this city. We were told that along with no deposit, we would also have no inspections, but we would be liable to pay for any damage when we ended the tenancy. I'd never heard of anything quite like it. We knew that for our budget and location, we weren't going to get any better, so we bought it. Move-in day rolled around quickly, and yesterday we got the keys to our first home together. It was such a strange feeling. The day was chaos, getting our stuff in and up in the lift. We were flat number 42 on the seventh floor. The items we couldn't get in the lift had to be taken up the stairs by the removal men. I think they were grateful we weren't any higher up, but I still think... I still wish we had been, been able to give them a better tip. In the evening, we settled down on our second-hand sofa given to us by a cousin of a friend and watched some TV. We smoked cigarettes on the balcony, looking at the park, and fell asleep on our mattress on the floor super early because we had no energy to put the bed together yet, and Jamie had work at a hideous time of the morning. We slept soundly last night. I felt safe and happy. I don't think that feeling's coming back anytime soon, oh, no. and it's all due to the note I found in the morning. Oh. I found this morning. I found it in the kitchen having a coffee hours after Jamie had left for his early shift at work. It was in one of the cupboards that was fixed to the wall. There were a bunch of useful items from the previous tenant. Spare keys to the flat, a set of tiny keys that locked and unlocked the windows, necessary for those with kids this high up. Spare smoke alarm batteries and a folded up piece of paper. The note was handwritten with new occupier of flat 42, a beautiful cursive on the blank side. I opened it up and sat down to read. I can't really describe it to you, so I'm going to copy it out below. Dear new occupier, firstly, welcome to your new home. I lived here for, for, for okay. I lived oh, here you before did. you for thirty five years with my husband. Unfortunately, he had an incident at home recently that I'd rather not discuss. That okay. claimed his life. My sister has now decided I can't keep up with the demands of the property, and has insisted that I move in with her and her husband. I was reluctant at first, but stairs, but the stairs do kill me at my age, and without Bernie, it's filled with sadness. Anyway. When you've lived somewhere for as long as I have, it feels like a person you know. You understand its personality—it's you understand its personality and what makes it tick. I thought it was probably pertinent that I impart some of that knowledge on you. It's a wonderful home, honestly. I've lived the best and worst years here. Leaving it behind is very emotional, but if you are to survive and get the best out of it, then there are some steps you need to follow. One, the landlord will never bother you. He doesn't visit, call, or communicate in any way. But make sure to pay your rent in a timely fashion always. I've only dealt with him once in 35 years, and let's just say I never missed another rent day. <laughs> Any repairs require you speak to the agent you rented the place with. Two, do not use the communal lift between 111 and 3.33 a.m. Just don't do it. This step is vital if you are to have a happy life here. It really is life or death. Don't do it. This has cost me and many others in the building greatly, and I would rather not elaborate on why you shouldn't do this. Just Please don't do it. I can't stress this enough. Ooh, that's like... Ugh. I wonder if it's like how her husband does. Oh, yeah. Three. When you hear the strange animal noises coming from flat 48, don't question it. Mr. Prentice lives there, and he's a lovely chap. Don't be afraid to say hello to him. He's old school, so he never risks the lift, so you might only see him on the stairs. But whatever you do, don't check on him when you hear the noises. You'll know when you hear them. Four. If you ever come across a window cleaner on the balcony, ignore him. He may seem like the nicest fellow you ever had trying to sell you something at the door but it really is best you don't engage he will go away if you ignore him but he tries pretty hard the first few times so you'll need some resilience whatever you do don't offer him anything no money no hot drink five don't leave food scraps out then refrigerate them immediately if you have small animals it is imperative that you watch the meat and take away any leftover food immediately after it's gone this and rule two go in hand rule two is um don't use the lift um Things forage all the things forage all day and seem to really love animal feed. You don't want them in your flat, I promise. You can leave what you want out between one eleven and three thirty three, so you may want to feed your pets then. Six. Don't communicate with any neighbors who claim to come from fat flats sixty five to seventy two. These flats suffered a fire in the late eighties that devastated the whole floor. All the residents died in their own homes. The building was mostly council owned at the time and they never bothered to renovate the flat. They've been empty ever since, but 
Every now and again, someone will knock at your door claiming to live in one of these flats and ask to borrow some sugar. They will seem average, but you must shut and lock the door immediately. I, I installed two extra security bolts to avoid these idiots. S- uh, seven. Simple one for you here. Keep a weapon in each room. Sometimes you follow all of these steps and something still slips through the net. Better to be safe than sorry. Eight. The building is a committee that will try and get you to join. It's one of those neighbors groups about improving living conditions for all residents. It's a nice group. The lady who runs it, Terry from Flat 26, is a fantastic neighbor. By all means, get involved. But... I wouldn't recommend babysitting Terry's two children. She'll ask you because the poor woman needs a break, but if you accept, don't say I didn't warn you. Nine. Stray hairless cats sometimes roam in the hallway. I know they're supposed to be a special expensive breed, but they don't belong to anyone. They're mostly harmless, but don't pick them up. Not unless you see one of the neighbors that claims to live in 65 to 72. Then grab it, the cat, and lock it inside with you. It'll burn your skin a little, but the cats are friendly, and I wouldn't want to see them hurt. Burn your skin? Okay. Okay. 10. There is no way to fix the damp patch on the ceiling in the bedroom. Sometimes it'll turn a deep crimson crimson, and look quite concerning, but please try not to be alarmed. It doesn't drip. It doesn't get any bigger, and, it, and it's been there longer than I have. The landlord won't budge on it, according to the agents. I flagged it many times, even called the police the first night it changed color, but it was a waste of time, and it will be for you, too. It's best to ignore it. 11. You can trust the postman. His name is Ian Flanders, and he's been the postman since before I moved in. He's had his own key to the to the main door and delivers post to the door every morning at 8 54 a.m i can't include everything here or it would become a novel but if you have any questions ian will help you 12 finally the first few weeks are the worst you'll feel like you've made a mistake i'm sure reading this you already do but if you can get through the first few weeks it really is a lovely block to live in every property has its quirks and this one is just a little extra special but you can be truly happy here if you just take my advice i wish you all the best i really do yours truly mrs prudence hemmings I don't really know what to think after reading the note. Hopefully it was some sort of joke, but the agent had said the previous tenant was an elderly lady, and I can't see anyone named Prudence Hemmings attempting to play practical jokes on someone they'd never met. (laughs) There were also parts of the notes I couldn't disprove. There was indeed a large damp patch above the bed that me and Jamie had already discussed recording. Yeah, that's a little scary. Yeah. Blood? Probably. Ghost of blood? Probably. (laughs) No crimson, but it definitely existed. I had also commented on a beautiful sphinx cat roaming the halls as we were moving in. I started to get seriously freaked out. Our dream, our beautiful little home, had become a source of fear and confusion. I checked the time, and it was 9.14. Out of time to catch the postman, Ian. When I opened the door to check, sure enough, two letters addressed to a Mrs. Hemming sat on the doorstep. At about 11.15, my worst fears were truly confirmed when a friendly middle-aged man looking... When a friendly middle-aged man... Middle-aged looking man, Terry window cleaning equipment knocked on my balcony door i ignored him i didn't want to take the risk until he'd spoken to jamie and showed him the note i texted him to already to rush home i felt bad as the man wrapped his knuckles against the door for over 10 minutes but honestly the, wa- the longer it went on the more i was terrified my windows were sparkling and due to our lack of curtains i couldn't even hide from his gaze i felt so exposed he stayed for a total of 30 minutes exactly and never once did he stop looking at me or knocking he shouted the occasional ultra-friendly line or humble request for a beverage in the heat through the door, but I did my best to avoid eye contact. When he finally left, I looked outside every window in the flat, but I couldn't see him on any of the other balconies or see him, see any equipment suggesting he was around. He had vanished. Jamie still hadn't texted me back. He must have been having a rough shift. It was a Friday, and they were always busy. It wasn't often that he didn't reply. He was due home in around an hour anyway. I read the note probably hundreds of times over. I tortured myself reading it for the next hour. I desperately waited for Jamie to come home through the door and to tell me it was all crazy and I should relax. I hoped for that so much. But Jamie never came. His shift should have finished around midday, but by 2 p.m. he still wasn't home. I panicked. I cried. I left over 100 voice messages on his phone, but got nowhere. I finally decided it had been long enough and that calling his work wouldn't embarrass him and his boss told me that he had never turned up for his shift. (gasps) I thought about it. What could have happened? And then it hit me. Oh, no. Jamie's shift started at 4 a.m. today. <gasps> he would have left the flat at 3.15 and taken the lift down the stairs. Uh. I don't know what to do. I've tried to convince myself it was a joke. Maybe Jamie wrote the note and got his boss in on it. A voice in my head kept telling me that he couldn't write like that if he tried, but I still had to attempt to fool myself. It's all getting late and he still isn't home. What if it's true? I think we made a big mistake. Oh, yeah. That's it. Oh, yeah. I think this might be part of a series. 
Really? So we might be able to read some of it next time. Um, but unfortunately, we're just about out of yeah. time. So, what did we think of our first paranormal PJ party? Honestly, it's so, so fun. This has been really fun. Um, I, I love ho- the PJ. I know. I hope to anyone watching, which might be a lot of people, I hope you guys enjoyed as well. Um, wherever you are, whatever you're wearing, just know you're an honorary PJ wearer. <laughs> And we will see you next week yes. where we can go over some other spooky stuff. Um, we have a lot of topics in store, not just Reddit stories. Um, we also have ideas to talk about cults or some other internet stuff. Um, so hopefully we'll see you back here soon. Um, hope you enjoyed the podcast. And I guess this is Sage out. Yeah. Bye.